So today I'll be presenting the biology and bass relation of the gizzard shad, a common bay fish in the United States. So quick ID has that silvery gray color that a lot of bay fish have. It's a black and blue dorsally usually, and if the water's a little off color, it might get a bronze look. Has a long trailing last dorsal ray, similar to the threadfin shad. Ventral scoot. It cannot be swallowed tail first in most cases. There's like small scales that act like spines. It cannot. It cannot be swallowed tail first. Has to be head first. It has a deep body, laterally comp compressed, kind of like a sunfish, and it has a subterminal mouth. That's probably the best identification factor for it. So here's some other bait fish that are found in the area, and notice they all have a terminal mouth. They have a terminal mouth, something that's they can feed in front of them or above them. The gizzard shad is a subterminal mouth. It's like kind of like a drum or a redfish. They have to feed down or in front of them down. That is probably the best identification for it. Habitat and range. We'll go over range first. It's found all over the southeast and pretty much up to the lower Midwest. Once it gets, once the those lakes have those thick freezes in the winter, you know, that the three feet of ice, temps dropping consistently below 40 degrees throughout the whole water column, shad kills begin. They can't survive in water 35 degrees or less. The places that they do like are shallow, flat, and fertile bodies of water in the southeast. Places like Lake Fork, Sam Rayburn, the Tennessee River, Mississippi River, those places where they don't have those steep shorelines, those flat places. You know, there's not you don't see any big bluffs going into the water, these real shallow fertile lakes. Here's an example of a good habitat, Lake Fork. Oh, Lake Fork is abundant with gizzard shad and a bad one. And the main difference between these two is the steep shorelines, the you know, overall depth. This is the blue is 25 feet in both pictures, so you can imagine just how steep Smith is and how flat fork is. They they like these fertile creeks running in the back, those high nutrient flat places. And here's their diet. This may not seem important, like oh I'm not fishing for them with bait, but. What makes them difference between other shad and herring is that, yes, they eat plankton, the zooplankton, which is those small invertebrates, the phytoplankton, which is the photosynthetic plankton, but they eat 13% of their body weight a day in this detritus. They're basically eating as much as they can, filtering it as much as they can, trying to get as much nutrients as possible from all this dead, decaying matter. You know, they like to eat algae too, but a lot of that stuff that's falling down to the bottom, they're silting through that mud and sand and leaves trying to find any nutrients. Which They're on the bottom a lot, that's key. Here's some growth rates that were uh, evaluated by uh, Jester and Jensen in 1972. We have 10 lakes right here throughout the country that have different growth rates year to year and I averaged all these lengths out after one year and it came out to about 157.1 millimeters which is about six inches that's a year six inches in a year so let's just say if a gizzard shad was born in May by next summer it will be in that six inch range from anywhere from four to eight inches when they're on the ledges so keep that in mind that's why these big magnum spoons and these big hollow bodies don't be afraid to throw big glide baits for gizzard shad eaters and lakes where gizzard shad are abundant and they're a great food source for these largemouth bass use big baits they like lowland reservoirs and they like flats you know these largemouth are going to be looking for them on those flats you know how much bass love feeding on flats well gizzard shad also like feeding on flats they spawn around that 70 degree mark kind of like threadfin but their their spawning ritual is not as easy to identify as threadfin threadfin will be bumping up against any solid color to lay their eggs on gizzard shad they just like to spawn in open water over things that their eggs can stick to a little bit different harder to find but they do a shad spawn is something a large a, a predator can key on because they're focused on spawning not necessarily predator evasion so that's 70 degree mark and remember throw those big baits they're abundant all over texas you know here's lee livesey with a 
what, nine pounder on Lake Fork. Keith Combs with two giants in East Texas. Throw those big baits. Don't be afraid. That's the main point I'm trying to get.